Now, Rona's Castle to some may just be a sleepy little Hampshire village, but during World War II it played a part in the preparations for the D-Day landings, and now the Village Association and Heritage Centre are appealing for help to buy a very special model depicting this period in the village's history. So, I went along to find out more. This is a scene of Roland's Castle in the days leading up to the D-Day assault. But is it? Actually, it's a highly detailed model by enthusiast Peter Goss, which the Village Heritage Centre is looking to buy. Well, the model depicts a uh, big moment in history. You know, pre, it's pre-D-Day. Uh, the accumulation of uh, troops, tanks and equipment, etc. before the landing. The attention to detail has been fantastic. and It, it must have been a labour of love for him. Peter wouldn't tell me exactly how long it took to make, but it must have taken many, many hours of, uh, of dedicated work. It was on display several years ago in the, in the village, the, the Church on the Green, their new uh, little hall that they have there, which um, that was set up by Peter Goss, who actually built and developed the, the model. He um, brought it down and displayed it. He's decided he wants to sell it. Uh, he has other projects he's working on, and uh, he wrote to somebody in the village, passed it on to the... RCA, the Rowan's Cast Association, and uh, saying it was up for sale. Were we interested? And uh, we immediately cottoned on to this, saying yes, it's, uh, it's its spiritual home, as we've, uh, we've used the, uh, the analogy uh, in the past. We just felt it was, it was too good to miss. It needs to be where it, where it, where it came from, basically. The model itself is one of a kind, and although it has some artistic license, it is a snapshot in time with many features still visible in the village today. The, uh, the rolling stock uh, has been customised to represent what was available in that time, the era, so it's of the period. The trucks, tanks, general equipment is of the, of the, of the era, all, all been made, it's not the new kits and it's actually been made. The buildings themselves look 99% as they do now, and very, very good replicas of the, of the building on the green. There's a, a very good uh, bridge that, that runs, the viaduct bridge that runs, the track runs over um, with two arches. In fact, somebody looked at a picture of that, um, of the model on the, on the stand and said, oh, that's, uh, that's a very good, I said, no, no, that's, that's not real, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's the model. And they couldn't believe the detail, even in the brickwork and everything is quite, uh, quite immaculate. The Rowlands Castle Association and Heritage Centre have been appealing for donations to bring the model home to the village it depicts. But Alan says they still need more help. Well, there's been a lot of interest. Um, people have come forward with donations or pledges of donations uh, to help us purchase it. So I think once, once we've got it up and running, it will be uh, well uh, well used and looked at. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we probably won't let people play with it. Uh, we've got several people who are railway modellers uh, and have models themselves locally who are volunteering to help us run it, maintain it, look after it. Uh, it needs a certain amount of uh, TLC to, to keep it in good order. It's got a lot of uh, fun to it as well. It's a fun element to it, but it also has a serious and poignant element to it being such a historic moment in time for the village. Yeah. And with fundraising well on track, let's hope that this venture doesn't run out of steam. This is Richard Stringer for That Solent. <laughs>